Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collector Chatter Podcast. This is episode 17. I am Miguel with my co-host here, Charlie, and we actually have a guest today, the one and only Sensei Serum, which we're super excited to have him yes. join us. Kick us off. Uh, Sensei, just tell us a little bit about yourself, just just a quick overview of you and just kind of like what got you into collecting and stuff. Just kind of let us know. All right. Thank you so much again, Charlie and uh, Miguel. Uh, my name is Felix. I go by Sensei Serum. Uh, Sensei Serum was a gamer tag. I had an Xbox for a long time. I was part of the Sensei clan with my friends. And uh, I'm a person who is a big fan of science. Uh, my degree, I'm in university right now. I'm in my final semester. I'm majoring in biomedical sciences. So I wanted something more sciencey. So Sensei cool. Serum. So that's where my name comes from. Nice. Um, a little bit about myself. I have a lot of different uh, genres I like to collect. I got Star Wars. I got My Hero Academia, The Office. I got wrestling. I'm a big fan of everything. <laughs> it comes <out> to <laughs> NBA. I feel you. Um, what else? Why did I start collecting? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I just, um, growing up, I was a huge uh, per- a person that liked to collect toys, like wrestling figures. But, you know, as you grow up, you're like, oh, you can't collect toys anymore. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you got these... Uh, Vial, uh, vial, uh, we got these uh, vinyl figures and i thought you know what that's a great gimmick it's a toy but not a toy it's a collectible <laughs> and i started off collecting the star wars funko pops from the first movie the force awakens i kind of got tired of it after a while so i gave that part of my collection to my mom being my mom big star wars fan probably like yourself charlie and then uh what slowly got me back into Funko Pops were the Overwatch Funko Pops. I thought they did a great job with them. Not that valuable, but uh definitely do a great job with the figures and scopes. And then once I started getting back into the game, I was like, oh, they got this, they got that, and uh the rest is history per se. <laughs> That's yeah, literally how it always happens. <laughs> there's just so many different lines, and yeah, it's at this point, it's like there really is something for everyone. I mean, what I know you just said some of the lines you collect, but what would you say is your you know, most favorite line that you are collecting right now? My most favorite line right now has to be the My Hero Academia pop line. Um, slowly working on that one. I just got Shigaraki in the mail from Whatnot. Uh, he's a character that has a hand over his face. I don't oh, want to yeah. explain. I don't want to spoil <laughs> how he got that hand or why okay. he has the hands. You just got to watch season five for that. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, I like Marvel. Um, Marvel's pretty good. NBA, I'm slowly collecting more and more for. I recently had an NBA mascot and player haul. Uh, I like the NBA mascot. They're not really that popular right now, but I feel like with NBA, those will gain uh, value over time. Wrestling, I'm particularly fond of right now as well. Uh, I like the recent Roman Reigns drop from Amazon with him in the belt that wrecked everyone and leave. Uh, that one will surely collect value over time. So those are the few lines. Are you like, so like, are you still like hardcore? And like, do you watch like Raw every week? I'm not a hardcore fan. I used to be a Mark, but um, recently I haven't really been following it. Yesterday there was a pay-per-view called Day One. And what happened was it was supposed to be Brock Lesnar. I don't know if you're familiar with wrestling. I I used to work on for WWE a little bit. Like I worked for USA Network. Um, You did? Yeah. So, and WWE was one of my shows. Um, But it's weirdly enough, I loved wrestling when I was a kid. And I kind of grew out of it. And I like, it's just so funny from working, um, for USA. I mean, it's still one of the most watched shows in the entire country. It's like, I feel like Crazy. that's hard for me to like grasp that it still is, but it is still so ridiculously popular. Um, so it, it just, it's nice when you see, you know, someone is a fan and I think they do a great job with the Funko pops. Absolutely. They've been getting better and better. Um, you know, wrestling, People call it fake. It's not really fake. It's more of a live performance art, you know, like, mm, you yeah. know, te- like, you know, a movie's fake, you know, but like, it's still, yeah. you believe into it, right? It's so, entertainment. Yeah. So wrestling, I haven't been following it, but yesterday was that day one pay-per-view and uh, it was supposed to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Uh, Roman Reigns got COVID, unfortunately, and then he ended up being in a different match and ended up winning that belt. And it's going to set up a lot of different storylines. So I'm very excited to see where they take that. Cool. Um, but otherwise mostly superficial just have it on uh, the social medias and i follow it yeah yeah i was big in wrestling obviously i think everybody was when you were like a yeah. kid I mean, like growing up like you had to have watched who's it. your favorite wrestler uh i used to love sting like, uh, I, I, think. I like Hulk hogan and the warrior yeah i mean hogan was always like a you know everyone like was like 
huge American, you know, hero type of thing. So I was I rooted for him. I actually seen him live once, which when I was like a little kid. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, same thing. I kind of like just grew out of it. And like now there's it's it's just crazy that it's still like you said, it's still pumping. It's still going. It's just as popular. Like another like just quick story, not to go super off topic, but same kind of thing as Charlie was talking about. Uh, I did some work for Discovery Channel for like a specific event at one point. And the, I was working with the social media like people. And one of the main ladies was basically constantly looking at our show, like how it was trending on Twitter and wrestling at that time was number one and i was like oh wow that's crazy they went and she's like no every single time we have a show shark week even like things like that wrestling is always winning in the trending topics and i'm like that is insane and it's just like you said just it's still there's still so many people that watch it but it's cool and funko like i do have some i have like the some of the og like classic wrestlers like i have some of those just not a lot of like the newer characters like i don't really have too you, many you're the stone cold one since it, that you made as your number one funk oh, absolutely year. that one's pretty sweet like i would say when he was in his prime that was like kind of yeah, when stone i cold. was like yeah absolutely. still into wrestling and then kind of just like faded off after him did you ever did you ever watch his show um where you know he you know goes on like rides with people and stuff I haven't got into that, but I am a big fan of his podcast. I haven't listened to it lately, the Broken Skull uh, Sessions. Um, I know there's like a actual podcast version and a WWE Network one. I do like Stone Cold quite a bit. Cool. Yeah. I, and uh, to back up what you guys were saying, like, why, why is wrestling so popular? I think it's just because the dedication of the fans. They just love it. They eat it up, and they're there to stay. They're not going to give it up anytime soon. No, they're not. And it's yeah. like... <laughs> They, they it's a commitment too for watching television like they watch it live most of the time and it's like on for a long time like three, <laughs> three hours, hours that's right. yeah so it's <laughs> so like true. wow there's raw yeah. smackdown nxt pay-per-views the yep. whole game yeah there's so many different ones now uh so going off of uh you know we're obviously talking about funko pops and everything like that but is there any other things you collect currently that's not funko specifically uh well not funko i'm about to say sodas but that's fun. Cool. <laughs> um, I have been slowly working on my My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer manga sets, uh, the collections, oh, nice. the books. So uh, I've been slowly picking at that, trying to get them all. They're about $10, about the same price as the pop. So it's not, not that bad. Um, but slowly, but surely, I'm working on that. I'm also working on my Pokemon cards. Uh, my mom got me a ton of Pokemon cards for Christmas. So <laughs> she, she knows, like, oh, they're hard to find. I'm going to get them. And uh, I'm very appreciative of that. makes makes my uh, life a lot easier to find them. Now, do do you um do you keep them all? Like, I mean, I know I've seen your rip packs before, but mm -hmm. do you you know open them all? Do you do you like to keep some of the sets that still you know in their packaging and not open? Or are you all about just opening the cards? I'm I'm like 95 percent opening. There are two ETBs I haven't opened. There's one ETB from the celebrations that I got on the wild from Target. And then there's this uh, Samazayan. I'm going to butcher the name, but it's uh, the one. I think it's the mascot for Sword. I like an elite yep, gold yep. printer box. Uh, that was a about. little bit pricey. Um, I saved that one and the ETBs. Otherwise, I just rip them all open. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's right. the way it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's another thing that like I, I was into collecting Pokemon, but from the original, like, back in the day like when it actually came out in 93 or whatever it was like i had those cards and then yeah. sad story but i probably had all the first edition like pretty much everyone it was insane <laughs> yeah me and my brother in a binder had them all and then it's kind of funny but i do want to tell the story my aunt very 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 religious uh convinced my mom that they were made by the devil and they were like bad and made us throw them out and we threw them all in the trash. And years later, when they got popular again, and obviously those OG ones, Valley was crazy. I was just like, are you kidding me? Like I had all these, stuff. but now I think there's just too many. And I see, I've seen you and, and, and Emma and Steele like opening mm -hmm. them and stuff and like you're naming them all. And I'm like, who are, like, I only know like the base oh, first hundred or whatever. And that's it. Other than that, I'm like, who are these people? Why is the entire card so shiny and they're huge? Like, <laughs> I have no idea about that, that kind of stuff, but I know it's a, it's a huge market and it's coming back around, especially yeah. during I, like the I, pandemic. I, I had told like. this story on a uh, new and old Funko Pop unboxing on the late night pop show. And I, I know my mom listens, so she'll probably get upset when I bring this up again, but <laughs> I was hardcore into Pokemon. Uh, and I, even as a kid, 
I had basically first editions of all the cards at that time that were, you know, like the first edition Charizard. Like I had that mm -hmm. mint condition. I would like, I'd have my set that I would play with the game. Like I would actually play the game too. It wasn't just collecting with my friends, had the ones I collected. And then kind of, you know, when I went off to college and my mom was just like kind of cleaning some stuff up, she was just like, oh, Charlie's never going to want these anymore. And like gave them away to like her friends, like, you know, younger son. And, you know, I was a little upset that she did that. And I kind of <laughs> joke around with her. And then, yeah, this past year when it's like blew up again, like people are going nuts. I'm like, oh my God, like, you know how much money you kind of just threw away? Like, it's just, it's just like, it's crazy, but I like that Pokemon has stood the test of time and it, yeah, it's going nowhere. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it's exciting that I, like, that's one thing that I'm like, you know, that's still cool. That's gotten Funko obviously make punk Pokemon pops and there's so many that they can make. So that's a whole nother, you know, thing that we can get into, but uh, I did want to ask you like, so obviously if you guys don't know, since it does have a YouTube channel, so I wanted to ask you about the channel. Like, how did the channel start? Like, when did it start or why did you start it? And what got you into doing, you know, YouTube in general? And you can, I know you have multiple channels now, but kind of like, where did it start from the beginning? <laughs> yes. Very good question. Uh, Pat Migs. So I w it all started with an unfortunate event. Uh, I used to play Overwatch quite a bit and during the pandemic, not really much to do. So I played that quite a bit. And then I, I kind of sprained my thumb from overplaying it. <laughs> so I was like, what do I do in the meantime? And then I was watching Top Pops. My personal favorite is Collecting Plastic, uh, Bearded Pop Hunter. Those were like the OGs uh, yep. before I started getting into the uh, Funko community. And I was like, I kind of like what they're doing. You know, and I, I collect these uh, vinyl figures. So I was like, let's put the two together. Let's see if I could do it. And then uh, my first video is on the Spider-Man Funko Pop from Homecoming, the unmasked Walmart version. So he's wearing his like regular uh, homemade suit. And I recorded the video. It's like maybe five minutes long. And I liked it. I was like, oh, I, I, I have a little <laughs> bit of a knack for this. You know, obviously it's not good, but like it's something, right? So uh, that's how I got the ball got rolling. And I started making videos after that. That was uh, last year. I don't know, technically. It was in 2020 now, right? So August of 2020 is when I really started my Funko YouTube career. Nice. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're you're definitely pro at it now. And, and, you know, <laughs> you you do live streams. You got your channels. You got your you got TikTok going. Uh, barely, barely got yeah. TikTok. Uh, God, it's just so funny. I I need to get yeah. more into like. I'm more of a TikTok watcher. I definitely feel like I need to start creating more on TikTok <laughs> because like, dude, that's like where it's that's at real. right now. It's insane. Like not to even go off topic, but just, I mean, there's creators now, like there are some of the people who have been on like all of the Marvel red carpets. They're, you know, doing the interviews of all of the, you know, celebrities that are coming down and they're all just TikTok people. It's just, it's insane mm -hmm. to me. And I mean, I feel like it's a lot harder to make good TikTok content though than people think like there's kind of like a formula that you got to follow but it is crazy how you know you can make a living off of tiktok yeah, yeah absolutely even, even as collectors and stuff like i know um one channel i don't know if you guys follow him pop paparazzi yep paparazzi i think is the way his name is i follow him on instagram but he's also huge on tiktok and and he basically translates his tiktoks into ig reels and he's just like not he's always putting out content funny stuff like and it's all funko related stuff and like that like he doesn't have a youtube channel that's what he does and that's like what he puts all his stuff into and it's like it's funny to see because it's just i guess quicker short videos and you kind of get like quick hits and stuff so mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing that like is kind of what we have to start getting used to because it's just huge when it comes to like content creating now whether right. it's tiktok or instagram whatever i feel like youtube is still just as big but it's a little bit of a different like crowd like who who actually watches like your viewers and stuff so but yeah that's that's cool that you got into uh into your youtube channel like that and kind of so i'm assuming you still game and stuff too though like that's, you started a, yes. a gaming channel now so yes. if you want to talk about that a little bit go for it yes 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 i i had started a second channel just dedicated to streaming video games called sensei serum streams very creative name <laughs> but um right now i'm working on a playthrough of pokemon brilliant diamond it's a remake of the pokemon diamond game that came out in 2006 and i you know i you know, i'm kind of familiar with the whole layout so uh, it's a fun time i have a nice group of people that watch me play 
um he'll probably watch your content as well so yeah that's what i've been doing um monday wednesday friday i think is what i want to do at eight o'clock nice. just an hour really short and sweet but uh that's just something that i'm um dipping my toes into per se awesome nice uh so i wanted to get into your collection a bit yeah. so um what what is like let's say like your top three favorite pops so you you think of that in your collection right now it probably changes uh, i'm sure over time but like what's something that you're like yeah these are mm. some of my favorites I, I know this is not really a high key item, but I do like the This Is Fine Dog, the Entertainment Earth exclusive. <laughs> I got that as a birthday yeah, present that. from um, Emma and Steele. Uh, it's just a meme, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know why. I just like the cute little uh, pop. And then I also got this pop from Sleeping Collectibles. For some reason, he went on a spending spree and he got me the sign Shoto Ozawa Eraserhead Funko Pop. Oh, awesome. Uh, that's sick. So Shoto Ozawa is my favorite character from My Hero Academia. I like his personality. And uh, otherwise, I also like the uh, Dwight with the bobblehead. That's the. Um, That's a good uh, one. I think it was NYCC 2019. My sister helped me get that one. So those are the top three at top of my head. I would pick. Is there anything that you really want to see them make? Whether it's um, a pop from a line or a soda, we can get into sodas as well. Oh, really? um, that you're already collecting, or something that they don't make at all that you wish Funko would get the license for. I don't know why, and this is for no particular reason, I guess, but I want to see the Blues Brothers. I want to see a two-pack of, of El Rey and John. That's kind of crazy that they don't make that, actually. Right? Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be a license. Uh, it, it mainly takes place in Chicago. There is one clip from Milwaukee, which I'm pretty proud of. So, uh, <laughs> that's why I guess it uh, touches me a little bit. But um, they did Jingle All the Way, which I'm very happy with. A very niche Yes, Christmas movie, I love yeah. that they did that. I, I have the love for that, just as you do. <laughs> Funko Soda is definitely, uh, or I don't know, Star Wars. Is it a Funko Soda, Funko Gold? It could go any direction, I guess, right? But I agree. That would see. get me to buy the Funko Gold if they made <laughs> it into Star Wars. But I'm curious if they'll they'll bring that line into, you know, non-real people. I think they should. I think it would make it much more successful if they brought it into movies and television, not just athletes and musicians at this point it's kind of interesting with the funko gold because right now they're not it's not like limited like funko sodas right there's no like twenty thousand piece set. it's like just the just the one the big just the one right? biggie, oh, the biggie three thousand yeah, right. piece yeah but overall yeah they're all common maybe the there's not and then there's chases Wilson. yeah there's some chases yeah. i guess like a, now with the sports right but overall, so it's very it's similar not. to funko sodas in that aspect and i think it's kind of brilliant how they wanted to separate the two a little bit because Funko sodas they're meant for more like you know comic book stores hot topic box lunch mm-hmm. versus like nba and i guess like biggie and uh we're gonna see little wayne and um andre 3000 right yep. those mm-hmm. are like more mainstream right so you'll see those at like walmart right so i think they did a brilliant idea with that i'm not necessarily on board with it but i can see people really getting it after a while yeah, I agree. I, I have a few of them. Uh, mostly like the biggie ones. Like I even have the big 12 inch. I didn't get any of the sports ones at all because I was a little, but like I've talked about them in the past. Like some people who don't actually have them may not know this, but they're they're more of an action figure because they actually do move the arms and the legs and stuff. So it's not like a soda and a pop in that aspect, which makes it, I guess, kind of cool because we've talked about in the past where Funko's trying to do a little bit of everything. And like, to me, that's kind of like their take on like the action figure even though i know back in the day they used to do kind of like action figures like really long time ago uh so that's kind of like probably their take on it but yeah star wars is i mean we've talked about before with sodas like sodas need to be coming i mean we have heard rumors i believe this year we are actually getting them some people have actually somewhat confirmed that so we're waiting on you know who it will be what they're going to look like are they going to still have the base like you know they're obviously probably not going to be bobblehead because Marvel, they got away with not doing bobblehead. So we're going to wait and see, but yeah, that's something that's going to be super exciting for, for me, for like, just to see the main first ones. I'm sure they're going to go with the, what's, what's you your know, like Darth number Vader. one Funko Star Wars soda you want to see made? Mine might have to be Darth Maul. Ooh, Darth Maul would be sweet. Um, I think the first one will be Vader and I'll totally be happy with that. Yeah. I think that'll probably be the first one. And that would be one. I think anyone, everyone would want, I think a Mandalorian obviously would be amazing too. And then maybe make like a chrome Boba metallic Fett? version of them and a Boba Fett, you know, that's especially Boba now. just came out. 
Yeah, I know. Now it's yeah. the show. So I, I, I'm sure because I know next year there's going to be a big, big thing with Star Wars. So I'm sure that's probably when it's going to drop. I feel like Star Wars, they have a good opportunity to run with good chases. Like you could do an Obi-Wan Kenobi one and it could be, you know, his, you know, at a New Hope version and like a prequels version like you could do like like darth maul perfect example you could have him him in the phantom menace and then you can have one of him like in the clone wars with his new legs like i don't want to see them be lazy and i feel like star wars is a really good way for them like not to be like luke skywalker you could make him as you know the jedi master in his ropes the green lightsaber and you could make it with you know him just becoming a jedi like i don't know i can go on all day and be really nerdy <laughs> i about don't it. think they're gonna do that but i think that would make sense Funko, listen but i agree to me, man come yeah. on i agree with you i think they're probably gonna go lazy and then the only other thing that i'm obviously i'm still be like this is sick to have star wars sodas but the only thing that's gonna make me be like maybe they're not gonna be as exciting as we want them to be is because i don't they're not gonna have much motion so you got to remember, like Star Wars pops, when we like them, we like them because of the the, the lightsaber yeah. moving. They're going to be very limited to the can. So I see them kind of being more just the figure and kind of just maybe standing or maybe having a lightsaber, but their arms really can't go out. So that's going to it's kind of sucks because it takes away from it. But I mean, again, they got to. Yeah, I just don't want to see just oh, the metallic chase, a glitter chase. Like <laughs> I just like it makes me so angry. Like, I, and I hate saying this, but like I don't even care sometimes when I don't get the chase because to me, it's just you either want to say you got the chase or it's clearly worth more money. But I feel like, you know, 50 percent of the time, the common's better. Um, it's because they've gotten so lazy with like, I'm just thinking about time I had a perfect one. Why not do more like the 89 Joker? Like that is a great chase. It's a completely different yes. look of him. Like I, I just, I get yep. when they don't do stuff like that. <laughs> I know. I, I think what's weird is that they do it. Sometimes they don't do it all the time. Exactly. So, then it's kind of, so that's like, what's why confusing. it's not like they're consistently not doing it. It's like, what are you doing? But they've really so. missed the ball with the MCU ones, in my opinion. Like, I don't, yeah. none of the chases are ones that I love them all, but none of the chases are like ones like you gotta have over the other one, in my, in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think it's, it's hit or miss. It's just so many sodas now. So you can definitely get a handful of them where you're like, this is an awesome chase. Like, this makes sense. Or I like flocked. Like, those look cool. If it's an animal, I, I do like the flock. Awesome. Ones. To me, that's like the best of, their way of changing the figure yeah out. yeah metallic i think is the is one of the worst ones glow is cool but it depends on if they make the figure itself glow vinyl or if they do that stupid paint kind of yeah, glow like you can't even tell nice. the difference between like the captain america zombie one from one yeah like that one's a bad one yeah like that one's awful and it doesn't even glow bright either that's that's a bad one yeah that 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 doesn't make sense to me but um yeah so that that's obviously some, <laughs> something that's like we can go on and on when it comes yeah. to that, but I did want to ask you this question. So uh, I wanted to ask you hypothetically, let's say money is not an issue, right? Mm -hmm. What is your all time grail that you really wish you can get? And like I said, money's not an issue in a sense of like, you're probably never going to think you can get it, but if you could, what would be one of those top grails that you don't currently have that you wish you had? I have three different answers for you. Go ahead, right. Good. Let's say so uh, there is an NYCC exclusive Dabi. This is a My Hero Academia. Um, he has like blue flames. Uh, he has like stitching. Uh, very expensive. The range could be like 150 to 300 easily for that one. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I wouldn't mind Misery, which is from ECCC, which was a Funko Shop shared drop kind of dealio. Very expensive for that one too, at least 150 for her. And then my number one would be Genos from One Punch Man. Um, one Punch Man is an anime which has Saitama, bald KP superhero. Mm -hmm. And uh, Genos was like kind of like a sidekick, robot, cyborg. And that one is the only really expensive pop. And it's about easily well over $100. Those are my three answers for you. Nice. That's funny you said one. So One Punch Man, I, I know nothing about that. I pulled that Sa Saitama or whatever in a mystery box twice. Yeah, I pulled case. that pop <laughs> two times. In a mystery box, and I knew nothing about this. And oh, I was like, you're talking what about is this uh, the terrible tornado? That that's cool. She's number <laughs> two in the hero S tier, but I could I could go on about that. <laughs> yeah, about you, have, you have a big passion. I mean, you have a big passion for, yeah, for anime. Did. So you watch. I'm assuming you watch and read manga and everything. So like, 
that's something that you're like super passionate about, right? And that's not just like yeah, the it's, it's a it's a newer thing in development. Um, I okay. started with One Punch Man, my favorite one by far, and then my friends Emma and Steel, uh, you know, we do rated F. And yep. They were like, yeah. you gotta watch, you gotta watch My Hero. <laughs> Over the summer, I had a perfect time to watch it. I binged all of it, caught up, and then after I finished that, I was like, would it be nice to read the manga? Maybe there's a little bit more or something different they do in the manga. They actually use Nintendo like figures and silhouettes, so I thought that was pretty sweet. Obviously, you can't do that because of licensing when it comes to yeah. the actual anime. So that's one difference I noticed. Um, that's all very new in development, the mangas. But uh, those are like the all the animes I watch besides like Demon Slayer. Um, I never watched Naruto or Dragon Ball Z. That's just way too many episodes to catch. The OG on. ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dragon Ball Z was my big thing when I was younger. I watched it like crazy, and then I kind of slow. That's why I have like a bunch of the you know, Dragon Ball yeah. Z ones here. But like I stopped, and then I got I, obviously like Avatar and things like that. But I I have a question for you. Do you watch it dubbed or do you watch it with subtitles? Gotta watch subtitles. I don't yeah, watch okay. subtitles. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've also I uh, recently I just remembered I'm watching Cowboy Bebop, the animated series, or like you know the anime, yep. not the live action. Yeah. That's probably probably one of the best ones I've seen, to be honest. I'm surprised all the Funko Pops are very expensive. I do have the Flocked Iron from the NYCC 2020. Um, they just don't soda. make many though, do they? No, very very small. They don't have a lot of characters per se, like, but um, yeah, I was very surprised to see that like the main character is like very expensive i think easily i got can i can i retract can i go back to the original questions about yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one now. That one? It. <laughs> spike uh spike is a, one of the most popular oh well, he is the main character so that one's very expensive but like you were saying pop mix there is that soda of edwin coming out and the chase has ein in it and that's i'm probably that's gonna cool. buy a case that's i agree that. that's cool like i i don't yeah like i said i'm not really into anime it's something i probably would like and would get into it just whether time or just i have so many other interests but i want that soda i just think it looks pretty cool yeah i was actually gonna say when you were naming a couple other animes and stuff one that i do actually love i have the actual like books and everything and i watched it and i have a couple of the pops is death note i think that's one of the greatest made like ones ever it's super like even if you're not super into anime like it's awesome like story and everything is just so cool i have two of i have l where he's got cake because there's two different versions of him and then ryuk is his name besides that there's another l and then there's light which is super expensive but both of those are kind of like grails now at this point and you don't you don't really find them like often but those are ones that like i'm like nah i gotta keep these i don't even remember how i got those but maybe i, I bet you're box. happy that you have them though <laughs> yeah i i wish i had light light is like one of the main characters l is awesome in the show but light is like over a hundred and something dollars. Like it's just like hard. And it's, it's one of those ones that's because it's older and stuff. There's probably not as many of them too. Cause I feel like back in the day, they didn't make as many, even with the standard common drops that feel like they just, you don't see them as often. So it's harder to even find someone selling it for you to even grab it if you like wanted, but yeah. But yeah, Would you say is my hero, like the biggest anime right now? That's a great question. Um, I definitely think it's in the top three. Obviously, a lot of people love Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, so I feel like they're up there. But I was gonna say oh, Demon Slayer is pretty big now too, right? Like yes, now like in the current. Yes, I think Attack on Titans was like the best selling manga yeah. for like ten years or so. Don't quote me; I, I I don't know for sure. But recently, Demon Slayer like is now the top selling manga. Yeah. So a lot of people are okay. big fans. Like uh, this one character I have here. The like, character seems super cool in Demon Slayer, so I feel like. Right. Back Jinetsu, like this made my top nice. 10 is a very common pop but if you find this you have to pick it up it's at least easily at least 25 dollars, and okay. that's just the base price it's going to yeah. continue to increase after time um so there is a huge like uh love for demon slayer is my hero number one top i would say top three top five okay yeah, I actually watched a few episodes of My Hero. It's kind of funny. Like the first season, I like that. I was like, let me try it out. It's a and little hard to get it. into, right? Yeah, yeah like, but... I liked it, but it was just like I feel like with a lot of anime, especially if you're getting into them now and they've already existed, there's just so many episodes to like try to catch up on. That unless, like Charlie said, unless you're like fully putting your time into that and like just binging that and not all these other shows that we're constantly watching and movies and stuff, I feel like that's the only reason why I haven't like fully jumped off and like gone after some of these, but. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Maybe maybe Demon Slayer would be something I would check out. You guys want to hear a series I'm currently binge watching, almost done with? Go for it. Breaking Bad. Just finished season four. Wait, first time? (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, first time. Oh my oh, god! Wow. I, I, I know. Favorite show of all time. <laughs> I wish yeah, I could experience that for the first time again. <laughs> oh man, I need. That's actually a show I will rewatch, and I have rewatched multiple times. Like a rewatch random. And like you don't know anything that like happens. Yeah, you uh, never was spoiled at all. Like you're no, going to. Well, this... I know there's a Gus Fring pop, so like that obviously was a spoiler. And obviously, okay. I think I know how it ends. I don't want to spoil it for those who hasn't yeah. watched it. In case. But um, it's been around for a while. Otherwise, <laughs> nothing has been spoiled for me. Wow, and, that's uh, good. It is though. quite the series to watch. It is. Wait, what season one. are you in right now? I just started season five. I think I'm on episode two. Oh, that's or the three. last. That's the last yeah. last season. Yeah, like, I think like season three was very hard to get, get into, like to watch because it's very slow and you got Skylar doing her shenanigans. I was like, oh, it's yeah. so hard to watch. But, but season four was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like, like that one chill. quite a bit. Yeah, Gus, it, I, yeah. I think that like I've always been a fan. I always say like it's my favorite show ever. I think it was one of the best written shows like of all time. Like it was just absolutely crazy. Yes. It was so brilliant. And obviously acting was phenomenal. And yeah, it's just such a good show, man. And and the thing is, it's one of those shows that it, it is a little bit of a slow burn the first episode or two. And some yeah. people will be like, I can't watch it. And they stop. And I'm like, you have to keep <laughs> Just the whole it. concept of that show is brilliant. Yeah, like just the tagline of it. All you're going to need is like the log line. You're like, this show is genius. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I love that show. That's one of my favorite of all time. Building. Yeah. That's so awesome that you're rewatching it, man. I mean, yeah, like I every that you're watching it for the first time because it, it is one that I've rewatched a few times and I love it. Just wait. Yeah, the end is the last I, season, I think, was done really well. And I think it was done for the uh perfect amount of time. They didn't stretch yeah. it out, they didn't go too crazy with like eight, nine seasons. Like I think it was perfect amount of seasons. And I didn't really like, I don't know if you're gonna watch it, but they kind of did a follow-up like movie. You didn't like that? I, I liked that. I, I, like I uh, liked it because I love I believe breaking bad, but I don't think it was necessary. And I, yeah, just well, think I it guess little, it wasn't. It wasn't it was necessary. a little eh. But like, yeah, and if you're you a got, hardcore um, fan, you like it, of course, seeing the characters and that kind of stuff. But yeah, Better Call Saul. Saul's my favorite. Better Call Saul was good. Oh, I yeah. love Better Call Saul. No, Better Call Saul is good, but that's different. It's more of a prequel. So like right. that kind of like you just re reintroducing those other characters and a couple other ones. So that, that I thought was good. But yeah. I would definitely ever, watch man. that show once you're done with Breaking Bad, especially yeah. if you're saying Saul's your favorite character. Oh, I love Saul. Oh yeah. He, so only gets, he only gets better <laughs> in that show. I mean, finding yeah, out he's how crazy he becomes, he's a, what he becomes is pretty cool. He's a very uh, humorous man in a humorless world. It's like, gosh, dang, he's so good. You, you got to get those pops, man. They're not that those, bad. They're about 30 bucks baseline. Well, it depends. It depends. And and so what's crazy about those pops, and I've, I've said this about other pops, but that's one of the pops that even if PPG says it's only a certain price, people don't sell it at that price. Yeah, people are selling it And they're it old and they're vaulted. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they're selling it way higher. So like I have a decent amount of those. Like I have the Jesse Pinkman and then I have Jesse and Walter in their hazmat, not the glow in the dark, just the regular yellow oh, hazmats. Yeah. I have Gus Fring normal. And then I actually bought, I think I did a yeah. video. I bought Gus Spring out of box. Right, right. That thing is a grail, but it's out of box. So it's not worth anything. But I was like, I got to have him. And then the old one where he's in the underwear, Walter White. Do you, yeah. do you have Hank? I feel like Hank is one of the best. Hank, I too. have. Mike I is I very Hank. expensive. And I don't have Mike, my German <sighs> child. His is like a hundred and something, like easily. You can't Another find a great cheaper character. Than that. Yeah. It's so funny. When I first started collecting, and not that I consider myself a completionist, but now, like with Star Wars and like a Mandalorian dr- line drops, like I try to get them all, but I would only like I have um you know walter white in his hazmat suit i have him in his un- like the underwear but like he was my favorite and like i just love those pops and it's like now i wish like oh i did get them all like i could have but <laughs> at the point i was just like only getting certain ones that i wanted I like wish. not knowing like yeah now i really wish i had a gust ring one like yeah or even like you know a might it just yeah it's it's crazy yeah that's one of those lines that i wish i was collecting sooner than when i ended up starting collecting that's one of the specific lines that i was like that's why because i wish i could have got all those at retail i wish i could you know because it's crazy to think that these things were retail 10 12 bucks whatever and now they're in the hundreds because it's like impossible to get them and they're all vaulted but like that and then some of the og dc ones like i wish i was collecting back then so i could have just got them and not had to the simpsons go crazy og yeah. simpsons they were at least yeah, like, there's, oh, like 300 a piece like yeah. crazy number it's so it's so crazy, and all, all those are those pops that like looked a lot of them yeah, the, the same. Yeah, the old they were look. very simple, like you know, not they're so detailed now. Like when you see a brand new pop versus like the OG ones, it's it's funny to see like uh like what they look like. But 
but yeah, that, 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 those are some good grails. I mean, I know most of them are because of, of course your biggest fandom and stuff with a lot of anime stuff. So, but those are, those are definitely some, some cool ones that hopefully you do charged. get. Maybe, hey, maybe you'll get a, are you into mystery boxes? Do you buy mystery boxes at all? Uh, only uh only the Chaz collectibles all chase mystery boxes i like those yeah. ones um there's gonna be a new one coming out i guess today on monday which is like the grail mystery box um for like 60 bucks um i like i like Chaz collectibles uh i haven't really done a lot with mystery boxes i used to got the i used to get i used to get the mystery grail ones but uh, yeah yeah those are some research and i was like oh, i don't really <laughs> yeah they're not the really best like those no. <laughs> <laughs> i just think it's a it's a good way to like try to get a grail like it's you're not gonna not mystery grail just mystery boxes in general mm -hmm. like your chances are obviously very low but like some of my highest grails like my uh green arrow that i have was yeah. from a mystery box i wouldn't have bought that on my own because it's a few 300 plus so like yeah. it's a cool way to get that so that maybe you can get some of those if you ever see those as a top hit like it could be your way of getting it hopefully you know what what would you say is your most you know expensive or prized possession pop in your entire collection Ooh. i do have the very first edition Yannick Antetokounmpo. um mm, that one that is, is particularly expensive. pretty expensive <laughs> i have them out of box i yeah. got it from my grandpa uh, so I do have that. That might be my biggest prize possession per se, like when it comes to actually like PPG value. Um, but I don't really collect for for value. I do have like the Black yeah. Eyed Jimi Hendrix. That one I think is going to be skyrocketing a little bit later. Mm -hmm. A lot of my hero pops, like uh, is like a Mister Compressed one, which is right here. He recently got both. I remember when that dropped. How hot that was, like for like to pick up at the con. Right. And then he sat for around twenty twenty five dollars for a while. This one you probably get thirty five, but since he's vaulted, I've seen people trying to sell it for like fifty plus easily. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I my hero ones for sure. I like that you say you don't collect for value because mm -hmm. I would say me and Migs don't either. I mean it's nice when you get get some that are, but with that being said, so do you just like keeping them in the box because you think they look better? Um like I, I just know some people who don't care about value at all. It's just like, let's just rip them all out of the box because you can display them, you know, and you can see all in detail. Or do you just keep them in the box because you know what? They could be worth money one day. Just curious. Absolutely. So my Star Wars, my original Star Wars collection, was all out of box. I just like them out of box. I think they look better out of box. But over time, you look at the prices and you're like, well, nobody yeah. really pays that much for out of box pops. Like, oh, better keep it in box. And they look pretty good mm -hmm. as a background, as a backdrop. Yep. So that's, yeah. that's probably the reason why I, can't, I have them in the box like that nowadays. Okay. No, that, that's cool. Yeah, the glare is bothering me. Sorry, I had to fix that. Sorry. <laughs> As you're like in the community, no, if you're, you're ever good. like, oh, you take it out of the box, people look at you like you're crazy. And like, I, I, I had it. I know you I did. This. I do too. <laughs> I, the one good thing about me is like, I, I have a lot of my collection out of box, but I, I kept the boxes. It was Smart. just, I couldn't get like, my wife makes fun of me like i just like couldn't get rid of them um so now i'm happy that i still have them like i could like put some back in but it's just like sometimes i just wish i've said this before the one thing i love now about sodas it's like they're meant to be taken out of the can and like i just like like that like i don't like having the option of like should this be in a box or not in a box <laughs> like i just like that you take those out i just yeah yeah I yeah, couldn't agree I, with you more, Charlie. And then especially you have like the blue blue box Star Wars ones. Right? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, so like definitely smart that you kept the box. Yeah, I had them. It's funny. I had those out of the box and I put them back in the box and like, they all look <laughs> good now. Um, but it's like, I. but it's just so funny because like I look at like I can see in your background like how you have the, the wrestling one, like the oh, scene yeah. out of the box. Like I have, you know, I got all the Star Wars, you know, um, Smuggler's Bounties and like the one scene from like Revenge of the Sith um, with Anakin fighting Obi-Wan. That has some pretty good PPG, but like that I does. took that out of the box because that just looks like those need to be out of the box. They look just like so much better. And like I had, you know, I've taken some Star Wars ones out of the box. Like I had my... um thrawn one out of the box but Ooh, i put that back in the box that's a mega grill <laughs> uh, um, but like luckily it's like you know i at least like that people in this community like can take things out of the box show it off put it back in the box and it's not considered like oh you've 
tarnish. Like, oh my god, you opened the box. Yeah. Yeah. Like I that's one thing I Nobody liked. needs to know. Nobody needs yeah, to know. Yeah, no one needs yeah. to know, even though I just told you, but but it's funny. Yeah. I'm never like I'm never selling that pop anyway. So like I don't really care. It's just no. that's it's a just sick crazy. moment too. Um Mufarsa. Mufasa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Mustafar. Uh, Mustafar, thank you. Yeah. Uh but. easily like 90 bucks, right? I think so, which is crazy because I remember, and we may have talked to this on one of our past episodes, but like with those, when those boxes were coming out, people were like, oh, these are never going to be worth anything. Like they're just mass producing them hardcore. And like, I think some of my like most valuable Star Wars pops at this point that aren't some of the OG ones or some random ones here or there have come from that box. Um, even some of the Marvel ones have, you know, gone up in mm-hmm. price. It's just, it's interesting. Yeah, some some yeah, I was gonna say it's that Captain America from Marvel Collector Core. Yeah, where he's holding the uh hammer and like the shield, I think, too, as yeah. well. That one's like pretty pricey. And then there's some that are like less than a common pop that came Shang- from that box. Shang-Chi? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm a big fan of Shang-Chi, so I didn't mind getting oh, yeah, it. No, but uh they could have been movie was that. great. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I but it, in, in terms of the out of boxing, obviously I had to always anytime someone for the first time like her like talk to me they were like oh do you have the boxes for that and it was like i'd tell the whole story and <laughs> you know i took them out because they i love the way they look i think they display perfectly in these baseball cases and i did keep the boxes for a little while then i was running out of room and I, I, unlike charlie's wife my wife <laughs> basically was like no these need to go because they're just taking up room in like these boxes so then i threw them away and to this day, I wish I had the boxes, even though I love the way it look out of box. I do wish I had the box because there's a few of these that are, there's a good amount of like legit grails in here. Like this whole Power Ranger section up here, they're all like 50 bucks each and don't have the boxes for any of them. So they're so really pop, not 50 bucks. <laughs> pop makes real quick. Like, like now that you have them out of box, you're kind of stuck with them, right? Is there any of them mm-hmm. that you kind of wish you had the box so you would not? Uh, yeah, uh, those. <laughs> so we can go to a better home per se, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, honestly, that the stuff, the, the the Power Rangers ones I have here, I wish I had the boxes for them. That's like for sure. And then probably like, because I have a couple of Breaking Bad ones on here that I don't have the boxes for. And the Stranger Things in the Game Game of Thrones don't really have too much value. They like plummeted in value for like right. some reason. But like after I started getting newer ones, like I had gotten a couple of newer Stranger Things ones and it was only like two of them in box, but my whole collection was out of box. I was like, this just like looks weird. And I was right. like, I can't display these next to each other. Like, two of them and they're not even expensive it's just two random ones in a box and then all the other ones out of the box so like i kind of wish and the og like animated batman stuff i have i wish i still had the box for those but it is what it is and i gotta deal with it i mean the only thing is uh like moving it's not as easy like if you could just ship them all in a box like basically i just tape up these things and leave them in that case and Hope move the them best. yeah <laughs> but then the ones that are the ones that are in between i gotta put them like in a bag or maybe bubble wrap them or whatever but i don't know i i, I thought about it honestly i don't mean going into tangent about this but i thought about it because currently we're we're in, we're in a house now but we want to own a house eventually and i started thinking i was like the day that we move moving i have almost like a thousand at least a thousand pops and sodas I am going to go crazy trying to figure out how to put all this stuff in boxes and how many boxes I'm going to need. Dude, I get anxiety over that because yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we'll be pro we're, we'll be moving in the near future. And it's just like, Oh my God, like having to pack all this stuff. And then it's just like, I get anxiety. It's like, Oh yeah. If some of these like grills I have, like, oh, what if they get damaged? But like at the end of the day, it's just like, it is what it is. Um, but it's yeah. Packing up Funko pops to move, like cannot be fun. Yep, not looking forward to that. <laughs> Especially, you know, I still live with my parents. You know, going to graduate soon. Got to have my own place. Like, ooh, uh, yeah, Good luck. I definitely just I definitely... just saran wrap the whole <laughs> the whole shelf and just take it like that. Might be your best bet. <laughs> that's, that's great advice. <laughs> All right, Ted. So, so uh, we had an awesome time. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to to ask him, Charlie. I know we kind of picked his brain for a little bit. No, yeah, I mean oh, just. Yeah. Yeah, just give, you know, give everyone a, a, you know, once over too about like what you're doing right now and, you know, where they can find you. Oh, thank you again, Pop Migs and Charlie for having me on today's uh, podcast. I'm a big fan. So definitely, definitely had a great time. Uh, so what's going on with me? I'm thinking, well, part of New Year's, new me kind of dealio. I kind of want to reach 1,000 subscribers. It's up to probably just like you, Pop Migs. Mm-hmm. I think I want to do a, uh, like a giveaway at 750 subs where I have like a pool of pops people can pick from and have like three winners. I think I want to do that, trying to get the incentive to get more people to subscribe. 
So if you're not subscribed to me and you're listening, uh, definitely uh, subscribe. You could end up becoming a winner of a future pool of pops I have going on. Um, otherwise, uh, I've been streaming quite a bit, playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond on my Sensei Serum Streams channel. And uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to see where uh, life takes me as I'm finishing college. So uh, we'll see. Nice. <laughs> congrats on that, by the way. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so definitely make sure you're following them. You can check them out on Instagram at Sensei Serum. Is that how it is? Sensei Serum, underscore? Serum that pops. Uh, Serum that pops. You know, might have co- copied this dot pop back in the day, but uh, <laughs> he's he's just a collectible or he's something trackers else now. now. So. I'm trackers. the original guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so definitely follow him. And also, I'll, we'll make sure that the links will be in our bio so that you can go to his YouTube page and obviously give him a subscribe over there check him out he does a bunch of unboxings and stuff so super cool channel as well as i know you do live streams with, with what the pop um mm-hmm. on tuesday nights right the oh uh, yes uh, rated f for funko so yes, make sure yes, that you yes. check that out and his other streaming channel as well but since i yeah thank you so much i'm so glad that you were on here i know you yes like listen to our episode I, I love having people on that do listen to us so i know you listen to all of our episodes and i really yeah. appreciate that thank you so much for the support i know we both really appreciate the support as well and um, yeah, happy new year to everybody out there. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, meeting another person in the community. Uh, it's great. You're a great friend and everything. So it's been awesome to have you on. And until next time, just make sure that you guys are also subscribed to our channel. Check us out. We just hit like, you know, since I said in the beginning, we hit a hundred finally on this channel. Congrats, guys. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I know we haven't been around too long, but we're, we're growing slow and steady, but I think we're at 102 now, maybe. So we're getting our way up there. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if, if not, if you're listening on the podcast avenues, thank you guys as well for listening that way. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got from me. Charlie, anything from you to close it yeah, up? Yeah. Just once again, since I thank you for, you know, coming on and all of your support, you've been one of our biggest supporters from day one and, you know, really appreciate it. And you're one of the best person that I feel like in this community and just having you on tonight, it's just such a good flow and you know i feel like you could you know you're part of the podcast so just thank you for coming on and like make said you know make sure you check out all of his channels he has some great content thank you guys of course all right everybody happy Until new next year week. happy new year happy week. new year bye everyone